Hey guys, a bit squid here and welcome to this Playmaker tutorial in Unity. So in a past video I did, I showed you how to create a save system and a load system um, where you save via a menu or by uh, interacting with an object in the actual game, like a physical location. <clears throat> um, but in this one, we're going to create a auto save system <clears throat> so that you know after so much time the game will automatically save itself so that if the player doesn't remember to save then at least they're not going to lose too much progress in your game okay so to begin i'm going to go to my ui here okay, and i'm going to add an image because most games, they have like an icon which will appear when the game is auto-saving. And I'm going to put the image as this little trophy here for now. And I'm going to anchor that to my left here. Okay, and we'll just scale it down a bit. Okay, so this is our save icon. And how did I put a C in there? Okay. And then we're going to hide that. So we're going to tick the box to disable it. Right, next, we want to create an empty game object. I'm going to call it a save, uh, auto save, sorry. Okay, and I just want to make sure that is set to zero. Doesn't actually matter where it is, but just so I can actually see my game view. <clears throat> okay, so this is our auto save. Okay, and we'll go to Playmaker. And we're going to add. Now you could do this if you don't want to have like a save icon, like popping up to show the player the game is auto saving. You can do this in less steps, but uh, for me, I'm going to do this in five. Okay, and we'll name each date. So it's called the FSM first auto save. Okay, I'm gonna say wait. Turn on icon. And save. Wait. I can't wait to. And then here, turn off icon. So, uh, in this tutorial, I'm going to be saving two variables. I'm going to save how many cakes the player has, as well as the player's position in the world. Okay, so we're going to first add a finished transition to all of these. And then we'll add our actions. Okay, I'm going to link them up in a circle. All right, so on wait, we want to wait, obviously. So we'll choose a wait action. And same for wait two, or whatever you want to call it. Okay, here we want to do a next frame event. Put it on here as well. I like to do it this way. It saves me having to type in things multiple times. And we want an activate game object. and an activate game object here. And then for saving. So saving is done by player pref. So we put player prefs. And we have some different options here. We can get, a, <clears throat> we can set float, save a variable, yeah, set a string. Now variable will offer much more options for saving. So we're going to choose that. So I'm going to put two save variables in here. Now, because I want to save position, I need to get the position. So I'm going to get position 2D. And then a next frame event. And actually, tell you what, I'll put a wait in there instead. Okay, so let's put these into an order. Alright, so first I want to get position. 
So I'm gonna game object, specify game object, player. And I want to save this into a vector too. So I'm gonna click a new one called player POS. Okay. Uh, yeah, let's do every frame for now. All right, next we want to have a variable. So key is like the password the game will use to check the file. So you could technically have multiple save files, each using different keys. So you could have like save file 1a for one variable. But just to make it simple in here, I'm going to call the key for this one, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And then I'm going to choose the type of variable it's going to save. I'm going to choose vector 2 to match my get position 2D. And then here, globals, I'm going to choose the variable I want to save. In this case, I've only got one vector 2. So I only have the option for player POS, so I'll choose this. Next, I'll say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. <clears throat> And this is going to be my float variable for the cakes. And I'll choose cakes here. Okay. And then I'm going to say let's wait 0.5, so half a second finished in real time. In the activate game object here, the icons here, we're going to choose specify game object. In the first one, we're going to put save icon. So that when it hits here, it's going to turn on the icon to show the game is saving. I'm going to put finish there. Uh, and here, it's going to be the same. We're going to specify game object, save icon. So this time we're going to tick the box or untick the box here for active, activate. And we'll set that to finished. And then for wait two, let's say it's going to take two seconds, uh, 2.5 seconds finished real time to turn off the icon and in here say every for the purposes of this tutorial I want to put 10 seconds all right uh, you can say it's what you want every five minutes obviously just work out minutes into seconds to get there and then finish event finished in real time I'm gonna save that now because I'm saving the position when we load in we need to make sure the player knows where to go so I'm going to add a new FSM on my player called set POS. And I'm just going to put set position 2D. And then I'm going to choose my vector, uh, the player POS there. And we'll say set position. Okay, so that is all now hooked up. Now, for the purpose of this tutorial, when I press the escape key on my keyboard, it will quit the game to the load screen. Um, so we actually now need to set that up. Now, it's important to make sure that we remember these here, the keys and what they match to, okay? Because if they are different, it's not going to work. Okay, so I know that player POS is going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, and then cakes is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so I'm going to go to my what will be my load screen, and just to get this working quickly, I have just this very nice button called button here. Okay, and I'm just going to add an FSM to here and let's call it load and I just need two states for this one okay I'm gonna put finished on there and link to there so here this is gonna be my on click and then here we'll call load Okay, so here literally just need a UI on pointer click event. Now, if you want, um, say, use a game controller, you can't use on click 
Is it going to show up on here? No, I think it's just zip UI button. Why is the preview enabled? Button on click event. You choose this one if it's like for a controller. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to choose here, finished. And it's going to go to load. And I'm going to choose player prefs. Load variable. And then also a load scene. Okay, so for the scene, it's going to be by name. And in the case of me, I called mine game. Now, if you want to use index, you can. Obviously, your index you want to check is under build settings. So, like my game would index number is one. But I like to use the name of the scene because if I change them around, then it's not going to mess up on here because it's going to look for a scene called game. Okay, and then we'll get our player prefs want to go above. So, first one was one, two, three, four, five, six, and that was a vector two with the player POS. Make sure that is correct. The same, and then my cakes was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and that was a float. And the float variable I want to call back is cakes. So we'll hit save, jump into our game view, and now hopefully this will work. Let me make sure that my player prefs are clear here. I'll hit play. All right, so actually one problem I forgot to do there is um, with a player, I need to make sure that vector two matches my player's current position, global variables. So go to my vector two, where is it? Player POS, and make sure that these numbers match numbers here. So it's minus 8.98, is that? Yep. Yeah. And then minus... 2.281 okay <clears throat> now if I hit play that should be fine he should start here I'll not have that crazy jumping around issue there okay so move around so let's just wait here we'll click the cake and wait here okay so it's saving finished Press escape. Now hopefully when it loads, we'll have 10 cakes and be in the same position. And there we go. Again, if I do this and I move him over, say, here. I'll put it here so there's oh, a bit of a contrast. Okay, saved. Remember now we're near here where the edge of the world ends. Okay, I'm going to press escape button. And you'll see we're now there. And now we have a fully working auto save. And it is really just that simple. Okay. So, um, any issues, just drop a comment below and I will help you out. Um, if you have any requests for tutorials, also drop a comment below and I will have a look into it. This one was a request. Um, and yeah. If you like this video, please like, hit the like button and also consider subscribing for more Playmaker tutorials. And also in the description, there will be a link to my Discord. If you have any issues, you can also contact me there as well. And until next time, 8-Bit Squid out.